For our first session today, we have SAP in the house. How SAP transitioned its global workforce to working from home with Rich Troughton. And without further ado, welcome, Rich. Hello. Let me just uh, get my slides up here. Fantastic. Thanks for presenting today. And we sure are thing. seeing some slides. And there we go. It's looking good. Take it away, sir. All right. Well, before we get started, there's two things I'd like to mention. Uh, the first that is that all the slides, speakers, notes, and the demos are available for download, and I'll be providing a link at the end of the talk. I tend to be one of those folks who can't keep up with the speaker and take notes at the same time. So for those folks in the same situation, there's no need to take notes. Everything I'm covering is going to be available for download. Uh, the second is to please hold all questions until the end. If you've got questions, make a note of them and ask me after the end of the talk. But with luck, I'll be able to answer most of your questions during the talk itself. So how did we get from SAP in the house in the office to SAP in the house? Well, let's take a look at how things shaped up. So the SAP executive board sends a company-wide email to ask that only business critical travel happen in March 2020. All other travel is now canceled. All SAP employees are advised to check with their direct management on how employees can best work from home, along with guidance on using our remotely accessible services. The SAP Executive Board announces that effective immediately, all SAP hosted in-person events planned for March 2020 are canceled. This decision includes all of SAP's planned conferences and our participation in South by Southwest. Internal in-person meetings are still allowed as long as no travel is involved, but participants in other offices should join virtually. SAP North America encourages all employees based in SAP Seattle and San Francisco Bay Area offices to work from home if possible until further notice. The offices themselves remained open for business critical activities and to accommodate those who couldn't work remotely. The SAP Executive Board announces that the existing travel restrictions are being extended to the end of April 2020. Business critical, critical travel is being defined as those matters requiring physical attendance, to ensure business continuity for all of SAP. Now, all offices remained open at this point, but the board was now requesting all employees worldwide to work remotely. Notice is also given that offices may be closing with short notice, so all employees are asked to take laptops and all necessary IT equipment home in the evenings with them. Along with the travel guidance, the U.S. now begins to restrict travel from Europe. The restriction is initially for the nations that are part of the Schengen zone and it excludes the UK, but this is later extended to include the UK as well. SAP North America announces that all of SAP's Canadian offices are closed temporarily in light of Canada's ban on entry into Canada. SAP America's National Corporate Office in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania closes as part of Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf's order to close all non-life-sustaining businesses in Pennsylvania. SAP employees are required to cancel all international business travel effective March 22nd, 2020 until further notice. All in-person events are also canceled for the month of April, 2020. SAP North America makes the, uh, the decision to close all US SAP office locations effective March 23rd, 2020 until further notice. Canadian offices, which had closed earlier in the week, likewise remain closed. Worldwide, SAP offices are now mostly closed as nations use population lockdowns and social distancing to help protect their citizens against coronavirus. SAP's executive board announces that all in-person events, including all SAP conferences, are canceled for the remainder of 2020. All meetings should use online digital tools, and even when offices are allowed to reopen, employees should still work from home wherever possible. So we've now gone from a company with large numbers of people in office buildings to the vast majority of us now working from our homes. We are now SAP in the house. How? Well, it's fair to say that SAP spent years unknowingly preparing for the pandemic because SAP has fostered a remote friendly workplace culture for a while. In order to work remotely, you need the approval of your immediate manager. And in the US, a large percent of, percentage of the SAP America workforce works either partly or entirely remotely. So to give an idea of how we got to the point of being able to shift to working from home, 
I'm going to be describing my own experiences because I think I'm a good example. So I was hired in 2017 to be a part of the team at SAP, which is responsible for overall management of Apple devices used by SAP. And as part of my joining the company, I agreed with my boss that I would be working 100% remotely. My official office is at the SAP America corporate headquarters in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. My actual workplace is at my home near Frederick, Maryland. And as part of equipping this office, I was able to take advantage of the following. First was that I was able to order computer equipment from an online portal and have it shipped directly to my house. And the second was having a hardware VPN box that not only connected me to the corporate network, but it also provided me a fully functional wireless access point to our internal company Wi-Fi network. I was also able to take advantage of a setup process for my new equipment in 2017, which only required an internet connection for 90% of, of the total setup process. So this setup process also provided me with remote access tools needed to complete the remaining 10% that required being connected to the company network. But how did we get to this in 2017? Well, let's first look back to where we were five years ago in 2016. So to help show our transformation process, I want to focus in on a single part of it. My team is responsible for supporting and managing SAP's Macs on a company-wide scale. So let's take a look at the process of setting up new Macs and upgrading them to new operating systems. So to manage SAP's Macs, we use a comprehensive management system for Apple, Mac OS, and iOS uh, devices called Jamf Pro, developed by Jamf Software. And Jam Pro gives us the ability to set up new Macs, install software, and manage the Macs configuration and settings. In particular, our users and technicians rely on Jamf's self-service portal to install SAP-approved software and to run scripts and diagnose and fix problems. It is difficult to overstate how useful Jamf Pro is to our company's Mac users, and in 2021, it is available to every SAP Mac that has an internet connection. However, it hasn't always been that way. In 2016, Thomas Sauresic became the new CIO at SAP. And as part of his new role, he decided that SAP needed to provide not just a good experience for SAP's Mac using employees, we needed to provide the best experience to be found anywhere. In 2016 though, we were not there. It was not awful. What it was, was typical. The Mac environment was trying to replicate the Windows environment as much as possible. We had a Jamf Pro server that could only manage Macs when they were on the company network. As soon as a Mac left the company network, we were not able to manage them or provide any of Jamf Pro services like the self-service portal. We had two separate wikis, one for IT staff and one for customers, and access to either required being on the company network. All the Macs were bound to an on-premise Active Directory domain and used it for account and login information. And this AD domain is only accessible within the company network. Along with being bound to Active Directory, everyone in the company was issued a certificate from our AD domain Active Directory Certificate Services. Referred to as SSO certificates, they are used within SAP to authenticate to the vast majority of our services. Our new machine setup process relied on installing the OS from a USB flash drive, then running a separate script which enrolled our Macs with Jam Pro. Once enrolled, Jam Pro would then install software and configure the Mac settings. Now, because our Jam Pro server is only available on the company network, new machines could only be set up in an office. We had a bazillion local distribution points to distribute software in every SAP office, but none of them could be accessed outside the company network. The number of distribution points also meant to delay in deploying software as all needed to be updated before new software could be installed. So as you can see, even when it came to just setting up new Macs, the resources needed were mostly tied to the company network. If coronavirus had struck in 2016, it would have been difficult, if not impossible, to transform this into a good work from home experience. So we wanted to make Mac management and support resources available to all of our SAP colleagues, no matter where they were working. So that meant that we needed to break out of this management model. So in the process of surveying what could only be accessed from the company network, we did find one thing that was different. SAP has internal communities built using JAM, which is a secure collaboration tool. JAM sites are available from outside the company network, and there's even a JAM mobile app for iOS. 
So the Mac and SAP Jam community was very active and it had more than 3,000 members in 2016. So it was a natural place to hold discussions and Q&A with SAP's Mac users. So as a first step, the decision was made to sunset the wikis in favor of concentrating content for both the general Mac community and IT technicians into the Mac at SAP Jam site. We also made our on-premise Jam Pro server accessible to the outside internet, which allowed us to manage corporate on Macs as long as they had an internet connection. And to help support this, we added a Jam Pro cloud distribution point hosted in Amazon Web Services S3 service. Hosting in S3 allowed us to stop using local distribution points and now use one global distribution point. So this global distribution point also eliminated the delay in distributing new software as software was instantly available once uploaded to our now solitary distribution point. And these changes were made more urgent by how the company's Mac population was growing by leaps and bounds. We also had an increasingly mobile workforce where our laptop population was far outstripping our desktop population. To provide a goal for relaunching on how we provided the Mac at SAP experience for our Mac using colleagues, we chose it to coincide with the launch of Mac OS Sierra in September 2016. In addition to our new focus on providing support with only an internet connection, we were also going to begin supporting a new Apple operating system on the day of its release. And as part of that effort, three new applications were developed. Each was designed to handle certain needs we saw within the SAP Mac community. Refresh was built to be an imaging tool which anyone could use. You didn't have to wait on IT to rebuild a Mac, you just needed to have a spare machine or a colleague's spare machine that you could connect to in target disk mode. Meanwhile, Assistant configured the Mac at a global level and installed all necessary software using Jam Pro policies. So with Jam Pro now accessible with only an internet connection, this meant that machines could be now set up or rebuilt without needing a connection to the company network. Meanwhile, Assistant's job wasn't quite done yet. It also worked at the user level to help the user configure their Mac.
And last but not least is a tool that some of you may have heard of already. This tool allows our users to work as standard users most of the time because they can always request admin rights when they need it. Privileges is also a self-contained application without network dependencies, so it can be used anywhere at any time. And we also have our tool called Apple Pies. So we built this using uh, Fiori, uh, which is an SAP uh, tool to provide a better user experience for SAP applications built on our S4 HANA platform by providing a browser-based front end for the application. So Fiori apps are also available to S any SAP employee with an internet connection and a web browser. So in our case, Fiori allowed us to build a web application which communicates with our Jamf Pro server using the API. It allows us to display certain information from our Jamf Pro server in an easy to understand format. All information displayed is pulled live from our Jamf Pro server, so Apple Pies is always up to date. Meanwhile, on the social media front, we revamped the Mac at SAP Jam site to help us better communicate with our Mac using colleagues. So with this work done, let's look again at what resources require the company network. In the course of a year, we had dramatically reduced our dependence on the corporate network. When we hit Sierra's launch day, everything was ready. We used the Mac at SAP Jam community to let our users know that upgrading to Sierra on release, on release day was just fine. We gave them clear directions on what to do to make their Macs ready to upgrade. First, go to self-service and make your Mac ready. After that, stop by the App Store and install Sierra. We used Apple Pies to show our colleagues what our Sierra adoption rate was and encourage them to upgrade if they hadn't already. By the second day of Sierra's release, we had already seen a thousand of our colleagues upgrade to Sierra. More importantly, our colleagues had access to the same data that we did so they could see this as well. Two months following Sierra's release, we were close to having 50% of our fleet upgraded. Meanwhile, we were making changes to our Sierra build to help us become less dependent on the corporate network. The first change was to stop using Active Directory mobile accounts and transition to using local accounts. Local accounts could be created on the Mac and they didn't require a connection to the company network. However, we still wanted to use Active Directory for Kerberos and password management, so at the same time, we began using Apple's Enterprise Connect to synchronize our local account passwords and provide Kerberos ticket management. With this change, we also began using Apple's Enterprise Connect to manage our SSO certificates. So in this case, Enterprise Connect was connecting to AD and running a script which leveraged the Kerberos credentials provided by Enterprise Connect to request the SSO certificate. However, this still required a connection back to our corporate network. 
At this point, we also made the decision that it was time to retire our existing Jamp Pro service, which was hosted on our corporate network, and set up a new Jamp Pro service hosted in Amazon Web Services. So why host in AWS? Well, first, we could take advantage of AWS's high availability services. We could make those Mac supporting services accessible by SAP employees as long as they had an internet connection. And this also allowed SAP IT to manage all internet connected SAP owned Macs. Building good infrastructure takes time though. So the team decided that the best approach was to deb debut it in time for high Sierra's release. So as Sierra launched and our colleagues adopting it on Moss, it was time to turn our attention to what was next, high Sierra. And one of our changes was going to be that we were only going to be supporting the shipping OS. Uh, with High Sierra's release, that meant only High Sierra was going to be oper was going to be supported. Um, if people needed assistance, but they were not yet running High Sierra, they would need to upgrade to High Sierra before the help desk could assist. And to help make sure that our Macs were keeping themselves up to date, the options for automatically downloading and installing Mac OS and security updates would also be enabled. These updates would be coming from Apple's own software update service, servers rather than ones that we were hosting ourselves. Another change was to resolve the dilemma of giving folks admin rights or not. Our answer is to use standard users by default and ensure that the privileges app is installed. That means that our users run as standard users the vast majority of the time, but when they need admin rights, those rights are available on demand. Meanwhile, Apple was making changes of their own. One of them was to remove support for the target disk mode based setup process that Refresh uses. So in its place, we decided to use internet recovery as it was Apple's supported method for installing the OS. So with the change using recovery, our high Sierra setup process looked like this. First, we go through Apple's the same username and password as our Active Directory accounts. And then once initial setup was completed, we would then use Assistant to install our software and settings. So along with launching support for High Sierra, we were also launching our new Amazon-based Jamf Pro service. As Jamf Pro is our primary source for inst software installation, new machine setup support and management, this was a major step forward for SAP and endpoint management being independent of our company network. So with this work done, let's look again at what's being required what required being on the company network? At this point, we're down to SSO certificates and printing. We're also cutting down on the infrastructure that we need to set up and run ourselves in favor of using Apple's cloud services. For example, we're using internet recovery to wipe and reload the operating system instead of having to set up and maintain our own tools. We're using Apple software update services in place of using on-premise caching servers. We're also use, having folks use the Mac App Store to upgrade to new versions of Mac OS. All of these services don't require us to do anything in terms of maintenance and support, and they're all available over a regular internet connection. So when we hit High Sierra's launch day, everything was ready to go, and we are once again able to provide that zero day support. We used the Mac and SAP GM community to let our users know that upgrading to High Sierra on release day was approved by IT. We had also made the upgrade process even easier as the only thing needed was to go to Apple's App Store and install High Sierra from there. Now to help folks with this, we put an upgrade to High Sierra button in our self-service. Unlike the Sierra release though, all that button did was open the Mac App Store to the correct page to download and install High Sierra. Thanks to the work done during Sierra, no other configuration was required to make Mac SAP Macs ready for High Sierra. And we followed a similar path for macOS Mojave, Catalina, and Big Sur, where we provided support on release day and also worked to be that much more independent of the corporate network. 
And our latest success in that regard has to do with new machine setups and user certificates. So Apple's automated device enrollment program allows us to have Macs that our colleagues can set up themselves without using IT's assistance. So this is how it looks um, for a Mac that's in Apple Business Manager for SAP. They need to provide their SAP uh, username and password. And unlike for High Sierra, we, where we had to go through the entire setup assistant, uh, in this case, what we're doing is that we have the panel, the setup assistant uh, panels show up that we want, which uh, allow us to set up the computer, give our users the choice of whether or not they want to enable network services, excuse me, location services, and also whether or not they want to enable Touch ID. And as always, we're using Apple's tooling for this, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel for anything. We just use what Apple provides. And after that, for Big Sur, we have a set of process that is using Jamf Pro self-service, which takes over from that point and runs the rest of the setup process. Once it finishes, self-service automatically quits and our Apple at SAP app greets the user and tells them how to complete the setup process. Our most recent innovation involves our SSO certificates, where we have been using Enterprise Connect to connect to the AD certificate server and retrieve an SSO certificate. However, this required a connection to the corporate network. To address this, we rolled out a new method in April 2020, where Jam Pro is used to connect to the AD certificate server and retrieve an SSO certificate for that Max user. Now, since Jam Pro is accessible from any internet connection, this means that getting an SSO certificate no longer requires a connection to the corporate network. So with this work done, let's look again at what's being required being on the company network. So at this point, we're down to the bare minimum and we're working to close even that gap by building a Fiori app that allows you to add corporate printers to your Mac from anywhere. So what all this means is that within four years, we turned a process that required the corporate network and a lot of support from IT into a process that can be run by one of our SAP colleagues sitting in their home using their home internet connection. Now, similar transformations have been occurring within other areas of SAP's IT infrastructure, where the focus has been on moving from on-premise services to now using cloud services. With regards to email, we've transitioned from on-premise Exchange to now using Exchange Online. For file storage, we've been retiring internal file services in favor of using OneDrive and SharePoint. And for internal communication, we've been retiring our on-premise Skype for Business in favor of now using Slack, Teams, and Zoom. And we've moved our human resources services to our SuccessFactors cloud service. And as part of that, we implemented self-service functionality for many HR functions. Even our Jamf Pro service has moved completely to the cloud with both our iOS and Mac management services moving to Jamf's, Jamf's Jamf cloud service in the past couple of years. While we didn't have a crystal ball and we didn't see this pandemic coming either, the actions we took between 2016 and 2020 were the right ones to help us move quickly to get our workforce from one in the office to one working from home. <laughs> now, because of this, we had time and resources available during this pandemic to develop tools to help ourselves and others. Now, a good example of this is Qualtrics' Remote Work Pulse tool, which helped businesses understand how prepared they are to work remotely and support their employees by making sure they have what they need. This was made available for free for whatever, whatever organization may need it. Another example is that SAP made Ariba Discovery open for free so that any buyer could post immediate sourcing needs and any supplier could respond to them. So when I was writing this talk and looking back in March and April 2020, I kept seeing places where we had been unintentionally prepared for the crisis when it came upon us. But the key word here is unintentionally. 
none of our previous efforts before 2020 had been in the service of preparing for what actually happened during the pandemic. I, the biggest lesson of all of this is that every so often, the universe is going to confront us with the unexpected, and we're going to have to react to that with what we've got. So first lesson is to make sure that your employees are well equipped to work no matter where they are. Um, you know, this doesn't just mean making sure they have a laptop. It means making sure that they have the tools available that uh, they can set up and start working from anywhere with minimal friction. Actively look for the barriers that may prevent work from getting done. And this can be approached from several angles. If your vital tools are not internet accessible, your VPN capacity needs to be robust enough to accommodate extraordinary levels of use. At the same time, the more tools you can move to be securely accessible via the internet, that's both less strain on your VPN and also less chance that a VPN failure will cause a complete work stoppage. And I'm sure we've all heard this sales pitch a thousand times, the cloud will solve many of our problems. But in this case, it was pretty true. SAP's embrace of cloud services, both our own and others, gave us redundancy, capacity, and omnipresence. Without being able to host services for our customers and ourselves on cloud providers like SAP Cloud Platform, Alibaba, Amazon, Azure, and Google, the coronavirus transition experience for both us and our customers could have been a lot rockier. Also, going along with the idea of the cloud providing redundancy, Having a plan B and C is essential for when things go even more sideways than they think you think they possibly can. So going back to March and April of last year, I'm sure a lot of folks remember how Zoom, along with its higher profile, was also found to have some security problems. So because we had multiple tools available for online meetings, we were able to keep working smoothly using those alternatives while working with Zoom to make sure that our Zoom setup was secured. And I'd say the, the most important lesson that I think the company learned last year was to keep those lines of communication wide open. In this unprecedented situation, SAP management went to great lengths to keep the company as a whole in the loop on what was going on and how it affected us as a company. Uh, in addition to numerous emails and direct communication from immediate management to team members, several all hands online me meetings were called during April 2020 alone to discuss what was happening and what was expected of all of us. So with that, that's the uh, end. And here is where you can get it all from this talk. Uh, PDF with the slides in the presenter's notes are available from the link on top. And the keynote slides with uh, all the, um, you know, all the slides, all the presenter's notes, all the demos, all the videos, all the everything is available by the link at the bottom of the screen. And with that, I'm going to leave that up. And I think, uh, Let's open the floor for questions. All right, fantastic, Rich. Thank you so much for presenting. Um, we do have a couple questions already for you. And the first one is, uh, did the refresh app feature the TV shop music? Is that TV shop? Do you know? I believe that is royalty free music that uh, my European colleagues found. So. Um... You know, that was, it, it was uh, good music, but, uh, you know, license, you know, royalty free. Well, it had me dancing. Um, so great. Okay, next question. How was access to the App Store controlled? Did everyone have individual App Store accounts? How did you log the activity? Uh, for the App Store, um, Sierra and, if I remember correctly, Sierra was the first one that you did need an Apple ID to get to. So... Uh, the the question of you know, running, you know, and managing folks' Apple IDs didn't occur. Um, and now with it coming through software update, that's even less of an issue. Uh, that said, we were not tracking anything that our users were doing. Okay, great. Um, how did the zero day support and easy upgrade work out from Mojave to Catalina? Uh, the latter one, not one of Apple's most stable OS versions. Did you encourage waiting for the initial bugs to be sorted out? No, we uh, announced support on release day and we encourage folks to upgrade. Okay, 
Any chance you could show more about the script that gathers the SSO certificate for the client? Um, like the one we were using with Enterprise Connect, I'm not quite sure what they mean. Because right now Sorry. it happens with uh, Jamf's ADCS connector and that's all managed by a profile now. Okay. Well, hopefully that helps. Um, are there plans to make the refresh and assistant apps available to the community? That is, you know what, that is something I can take back to my management. Uh, at this point, no. Um, uh, I'm not aware of any plans. Okay, what is the deal with Apple Enterprise Connect? How is it obtained as a quick search? Wasn't too informative. So Apple Enterprise Connect has actually been superseded as of uh, Catalina with Apple's new Kerberos SSO extension. Um, if you have older OSs that you want to support, I mean, it does still work on Catalina and Big Sur. I would encourage talking to your Apple SE about it as they should be able to get you hooked up because this is something that you would have to pay Apple uh, a few grand for. And then after that, you get uh, both the app and support. Okay. Uh, okay, we have uh, just a, a couple minutes left before we need to go to break, but uh, why use AWS with uh, uh, CDN with Jam Pro rather than uh, Jam Pro Cloud? I'm not sure I understand that question. Like uh, for okay. for the distribution point? Correct. For, I think that's the point. I think that's the thrust, yeah. Well, we were using uh, the cloud distribution point before we moved to Jamf Cloud. And rather than uh, try to migrate everything, um, once we moved to Jamf Cloud, we just kept using that cloud distribution point. Um, one bonus for us is that uh, since it's running out of our AWS account, one of the nice things we could do is actually sync the contents of that cloud distribution point to somewhere else, um, like a local a local machine, so we can keep our own uh, copies of our installers, what's currently available up in Jamf Pro, which is not something you get with the Jamf Cloud distribution point. Jamf Cloud distribution point, sorry. Ah, okay, very good. All right, well, uh, thank you again, Rich. I really appreciate you taking the time to deliver today's first session. Sure thing.